Hey miners, today's video is a follow-up video to my Turbo Plotter 9000 setup and review. I touched base on using an SSD as your staging drive when plotting those notorious SMR type drives. Um, so basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be hooking up an SSD drive and we're going to be plotting an SMR drive. Pretty straightforward. Um, but for starters, we're going to need a Turbo Plotter 9000 application and I'm pretty sure most of you have the beta version so that's the one we're going to be using and we're going to be using a GeForce GTX 1060 6 gig video card um, as our computational device the SSD drive that we're going to be using is not just a run of the mill type you know $50 or 64 gig PNY hard drive um, I want to use you know the best quickest type of uh, SSD drive out there and in my opinion it, it is a PCI Express solid state drive um, and our target device will be a Seagate Backup Plus and is an 8 terabyte SMR based type drive uh, these drives you'll only find in external hard drives You'll never find them in a server or a NAS storage device or a workstation. Um, they're just they're just drives that lack in performance. They're meant for storing JPEGs, music, documents. They're not meant for uh, you know continuous read and write speeds um, like video editing and music editing. So, uh, but for burst coin mining, they're uh, extremely ideal because they're they are the best bang for the buck. Um, you're not going to find a cheaper 8 terabyte hard drive, and for burst coin mining, you don't need a, a high-end, high-performance, um, you know, 10,000 RPM SCSI hard drive. So, so we have our uh, we have our application, um, we have our GPU, we have our SSD, and we have our target path. Um, so let me uh, let me show you what we're going to be using here. So this is the solid state drive they're going to be using. It is a Western Digital Black PCI Express high performance NVMe type drive. It uses the M.2 slot in your motherboard. And it is Gen 3 times 4, 256 gig. This here will give us the fastest possible um, transmission between hard drive and device. And I'm going to show you where we're going to mount it. Right there, in that slot. And not only that, but we're also going to be using our 3.1 USB input, which this cable here is plugged into. And a roof above it is a 3.0. A uh, USB 3.1 has a, a quicker operates at a quicker speed than the 3.0, and if you don't have a 3.1, uh, there's always a USB C. So if your motherboard has USB C input, then that too operates at the same speed as a 3.1. So 3.1 is as quick as a USB C, and quicker than a USB 3.0, and quicker than your SATA 3 uh, port on your motherboard in the back. Okay, so now that we got our M.2 solid state drive installed, be sure to follow your motherboard instructions. Um, some motherboards require that you do not install a hard disk drive through the SATA port number one or zero on your motherboard. Um, you have to have you have to leave that port open in order for the M.2 to be recognized by the motherboard. Um, but just to make sure, what you want to do is you want to go in your device manager and make sure all your drives are in there so I've got one two three four five six seven eight nine drives um, the Seagate expansion that's the that's the eight terabyte um, Seagate SMR drive they're going to be plotting so that's that's in the USB port and this is the M.2 solid state drive that I just 
installed, the 256. So once it's um, once you see it in your device manager, it means it's installed properly. But before we can use it, you need to partition it or format it in order for the in order for Windows to use it. Um, so what you do is you go um, right click the Windows icon, and you want to go to Computer Management, and then this is going to pop up. Computer Management, you just let it load, and you hit Disk Management. Okay, so once you um, once you click Disk Management, um, you let all the drives load up, and you scroll down to the M.2 that you just installed, and you need to initialize it. So we're going to initialize it. Uh, GP, GPT, GUID partition table. Right, once it's initialized, you could format this so Windows can start using it. So then you right click it, hit new simple volume, next, maximum disk space, yep, maximum disk space and megs, yep, simple volume and size, yep, we want to use the whole size, hit next. Um, it's gonna, Windows is automatically gonna choose a letter for it, um, just let it do its thing. Hit next, format with the following say, NTFS, default, volume label. I want to call this WD SSD M.2.250. WD 256. There you go. Hit next. Hit finish. And it's going to format it. And it's going to come up in your device properties. That's it there. This is the expansion drive we just put in there. We need to, uh, we need to put in a folder in there. And we need to call it burst. Okay, we got a folder in our Seagate expansion drive that we will be plotting. This is very important. You need a burst folder in there. We all got burst folders. Alright, we're good. Close that up. Close that up. And then we're going to open up uh, Turbo Plotter 9000 application. Where is that? There it is. Okay, so this is our CPU, our GPU. We have a 1060 and a 1050. I do believe this application only works with NVIDIA cards. Alright, so GPU it is, 1060, that's what we're using, it's obviously quicker than our 1050. SSD path, we're going to click our SSD. That's the guy, OK, target. That's the guy. 8 terabytes. Starting nonce. You need to know your starting nonce. Starting nonce is. This is going to be my starting nonce. My last nonce, I think it was like 98, 5 something, something, something. So I just rounded to uh, 100 million. 
if you're using the SSD option here then you can have a nonce file quicker or bigger than 127.8 gigs so we have our GPU selected, we have our SSD selected, we have our target disk path, um, starting nonce, and the maximum file size. Um, we can't exceed that. So once you got all that going, we're going to hit start plotting. So we're gonna let it uh, let it do its thing here. What you're doing is you're you're expanding the cache or the buffer of the actual drive. So let's say that this SMR drive had a 64 meg um, buffer on it. Um, what you're doing is you're, you're extending the actual buffer on it to 256. Now I don't know if you guys uh, remember back in the day when CD writers first came out. The you know CD-ROM has been out for quite a while, but then when the CD writer actually came out back in, I say early 2000 or 1999, uh, people were copying their music discs that they had. They had a music you know CD collection, so they put their music disc in the CD-ROM. They put their blank one in the CD writer, and they'll try to write from the music disc directly to the CD-R. And what would happen is that you'd get um, a buffer underrun error. And so it would start writing, but once uh, once the um, CD-ROM was moving quicker than the CD writer, you would have an error, or it would the disc would just be damaged. And um, then you would realize that in order to get a proper write from one image to another, they would actually have to copy the entire music CD as an image onto the hard drive and once the entire image is on the hard drive then you can move the entire image onto the CD writer and that would give you a hundred percent success rate by doing that so this is a very similar idea that um, the Turbo Plotter 9000 is doing here is it's it's writing directly to a S, um, an SSD drive and then from the SSD on to the SMR drive and when you do that you're getting a sequential write speed. So if we look at the nonsense per minute, it's uh it's about thirty thousand, it got as high as thirty thousand there. It's up and down, but it, it's got a it's got a peak of about thirty four thousand, thirty thousand nonsense per minute, which is very fast. Um, the write speed right now is 130 megs per second, um, give or take. So it goes as low as 100 megs per second and as high as 134, I think I saw it. So what we're going to do is I'm just going to let this run and let it, let it do its thing. And then we'll get back to it. Hey guys, so we're back. And 16 hours later from when we started this uh, this plot, um, it completed 50% of uh, of the entire drive. So four terabytes has been written already within 16 hours. Um, that is a considerable difference if you were to just use um, your graphics card and write it directly to the external drive. Um, I've done that before and it took so long that I didn't bother making a video over it um, because it was actually writing at five, um, 5 megs per second or less and it would take like it would take a day just for one terabyte or a day and a half I think it was so we did four terabytes in 16 hours. Um, I'm not going to do the whole eight terabytes because um, I'm going to assume that 
you know, the extra four terabytes is going to be another 16 hours. So you can do eight terabytes in just over a day. Um, so I highly recommend you use an SSD hard drive as a staging drive when plotting these SMR drives. It does what it is intended to do, and um, it works flawlessly. But in retrospect, I would make a couple changes, and that is um, you don't need anything higher than a 1050, really, to um, as your computational um, power. You don't yeah, you don't need anything more than a, a 1050 Ti. So I could use that. Um, another change I would have made, I probably would have got a bigger SSD drive. So for those of you who are considering this option. Um, I would say 512, 512 or higher. Um, I should have I should have used the 512, but of course you now there's also the price point there as well, uh, depending on how much you want to use as a staging drive. Um, and that's about it. So hopefully uh, you guys um, you guys found this video helpful. Um, subscribe, like, um, and as always, pay it forward. Thanks for watching, guys.